coming to the last type of the eicosanoids is platelet activating factor okay which is also called as paf okay so this platelet activating factor okay is similar to that of eicosanoids but it is derived from different cell membrane okay so normally that is the polar lipids it is usually derived from polar lipids and usually this platelet activating factor it is acetyl glyceryl ether phosphoryl choline acetyl glyceryl ether phosphoryl choline okay so normally this platelet activating factor it is synthesized from phospholipid it is usually synthesized from phospholipid okay so here the synthesis usually what happens is in the membrane of the cell there is presence of acylglycerophosphocholine so this acylphosphocholine in the presence of phospholipase a2 and fatty acid they form lysoplatelet activating factor and finally it forms the platelet activating factor in the presence of acetyl transferase enzyme by converting acetyl coa to coa by converting acetyl coa to coa okay so normally this is the first step in the synthesis the second step is the rate limiting step rate limiting step okay so here what happens is the platelet activating factor in the presence of acetyl hydrolase acetyl hydrolase gives out acetate again it forms lyso platelet activating factor and in the presence of acyl transferase and giving out fatty acid it forms acyl glycerophosphocholine okay so just opposite okay so opposite reaction normally occurs in the second step so there are various actions that is normally mediated by this platelet activating factor first one is platelet aggregation platelet aggregation okay because it releases thromboxin a2 and this is responsible for platelet aggregation so that causes thrombosis okay. second action is by wbc on wbc so normally this platelet activating factor act as chemotactic so already i told especially for neutrophil sign monocytes okay so what happens is the neutrophils normally aggregate neutrophils normally aggregate and they stick to endothelium okay so once they stick to the endothelium they migrate normally to the site of infection where it causes the release of lysosomal enzymes okay and when enzymes are released normally they release the superoxide ion radical at that particular surface third action is on blood vessels okay so normally causes vasodilation 
which might be due to endothelium dependent releasing factor which causes decrease in blood pressure okay and this decrease in blood pressure is most commonly seen on iv injection okay. the next action is paf is known to increase vascular permeability it increases vascular permeability okay so permeability increases means normally it is responsible for causing edema at that particular site and the next action is on smooth muscles where it causes contraction of smooth muscle okay so it might be due to prostaglandin release thromboxin a2 release or it might be either due to leukotriene especially c4 okay the next action is on stomach normally it is ulcerogenic okay ulcerogenic means normally it causes erosion on the stomach so if you consider it causes erosion and bleeding at that particular site okay so these are the various actions of platelet activating factor so, okay so normally when the mechanism of action of this is normally the act via g protein coupled receptor it acts via g protein coupled receptor so here since it is acting g protein coupled receptors it normally acts through inositol triphosphate pathway where it causes increase in the calcium concentration okay so this is the mechanism that is involved via the g protein coupled receptors where it activates the inositol triphosphate pathway and thus increases the calcium concentration okay so these are the various actions that is normally mediated by this platelet activating factor okay so similar to that of prostaglandins it has got both physiological effect as well as pathological effect okay so generally if you take the pathophysiological effect it is normally found at the site of inflammation so what happens is there will be antigen antibody reaction and asthma anaphylactic conditions okay so this will be the physiological effect hemostasis which normally brings about platelet aggregation and also labor and ischemic states of the brain heart and git okay so these are the three components that normally comes under eicosanoids which completes the topic eicosanoids which includes prostaglandins leukotrienes as well as platelet activating factor okay so in the next video or the online class we'll discuss one more topic thank you